Gentlemen, we are the Elmina Slave Dungeons, uh, Cape Coast Slave Dungeons right now, sorry. Cape Coast Slave Dungeons right now. And uh, he's an interior guide. I've known him for years. He speaks so slow for you to understand everything. He has patience, a lot of patience. Is your patience here or here or here? Everywhere. I said, the, you see, the patience is in the body. So therefore, he will take you around. Let's ask all questions. Uh, he knows whatever, whatever, here. And he will answer every question. So if he is here, I can go and, and sleep. I have no problem at all. Yes. So he's Titi, Tete. Tete, yes. So he will introduce himself and then he will start taking us around. All right. Thank so you. We say a quaba. Yeah. Yeah. And Mama watching. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, good morning to you all. And you are all welcome. My name is Mark Tete. I'm going to be your tour guide. So, because of the sun, I want us to get to a better place so that we can begin. So, let's move to this side, please. He gave me a number, I gotta multiply that by something else in order to get the total. Yeah. Kind of like back in like elementary. Uh -huh. He gave me like half of the. I'll talk to him, Messi. He just need a total amount. That's it. All right, so the tour is taking us for about one hour. And after an introduction, to see where British kept about 1,000 enslaved Africans. We will come out to the yard and talk about some graves. Then move on to the female dungeons. Then to the door of no return. However, I promise you, today we are all going to return peacefully. If we do that, we will have ourselves condemn yourself. And God willing, to survive the condemnation and still have some strength and time, then we shall go upstairs briefly to see the rest of the bridge. Basically, it's a long way. And on a tour, you can take photos, you can ask questions, comment, and call it work. But let me say we are going to talk about the trans Atlantic slave trade and what happened to our ancestors years ago. And the story is very, very sad and emotional. So psychologically, you have to be strong. Now we are in historic Cape Coast Castle. But the word Cape Coast itself, it is a corrupted Portuguese word from the word Cabo Coast, which means short Cape. And that was corrupted into Cape Coast. Let me pause a while. Hello. Here, part, part of our protocols. We have to be on Mars. So can you please, when you start moving, can you put your mask, please? When you start, start moving. Now you can do it. When you start moving, then you can put on a mask. Not now. When you start going in there. Oh, he said that the ventilation is Now you can leave there. So breathe now. Start going in there. Light our candle. There are two dungeons. Sometimes we do it in there. So I don't know where you want to do it. Um, it depends on the anywhere, I, I mean, people can choose where they need to. Yeah, so um, you have been before, so you will know the where it will be good for you. Uh, wherever the people feel, where they feel a connection, whether female dungeon, male dungeons, or... So I said the word Cape Coast is a corrupted Portuguese word from the word Cabo Coast, which means short Cape. And that was corrupted into Cape Coast by the English. This structure is the youngest and the last castle in Ghana. There are three castles in Ghana, cool. and several of the fort along the coast that were built by Europeans. And almost all of them were used for trans Atlantic slave trade. And the first one is the one at Albina. That was built around 1482 by Portuguese under the leadership of one Don Diego Jezanuja. There's one in Accra. That was built around 1661. And this from Denmark. This one was constructed by British in 1665. So basically, this one is the youngest. 
This one was built at the time, slave trade, that we're come to talk about now. It started in Africa for almost 200 years already. And it was an epic, because slave trade started at the first castle, but not this one, Elmina. It was during the 1500, when in the history of the whole world, there was this man called Christopher Columbus. He said he discovered the Americas. So when he said so, the Spanish moved from Europe to those places, and they established their plantations where they needed labor to work. So they tried to use the local people called the Native Americans, and the Red Indians to work for them. But according to the same Europeans, they said those people were not strong, and they were dying from diseases. So there was a Catholic bishop, his name was Bartolomeo de las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish to look for alternative sources of labor to replace the Native Americans. What happened was that even before the start of the trans atlantic slave trade, the Europeans came to build these castles, like this along the coast of West Africa. There was what we call the trans-Saharan trade, which the Arabs took some blacks through the Saharan desert to Europe. So some of those people were taken from Europe, especially from Spain and Lisbon, to the New World, and they tried them, and they proved to be fiscally strong. So at first, they were taking Africans from Europe to the farm to work for them in the New World. But this time, the Africans there got finished but there were not many. So they had to come back to Africa again to take the blacks to the farms. And that was the time Portuguese built Elmina Castle in the 1500. Portuguese came to Elmina in search of gold. But this country was once called Gold Coast. So the gold was the white people. They would tell you they came to spread Christianity. It's never true. They came because of our resources. The Portuguese who were there in, in, in search of gold were given a license they called it ASEAN to, to legally transport black people to the new world. So West Africa, Portuguese, started slave trade. They stayed at Elmina for about 150 years by and selling black people. The Dutch attacked them, 1637, they defeated them. So the Dutch were there for about 50 years before British came in. And when British got here, Dutch were at Elmina, occupied this land. So British fought Dutch people, 1664, they defeated them. And that 1664 was the year a state in America called New York, then New Amsterdam, also changed out from the Dutch to British. The same year, British defeated the Dutch. Then the British defeated the Dutch, they started building the castle. They built it in states. It went through demolition, addition before they got this entire structure. And the way they designed it, the dungeons alone had a capacity to hold about 1,300 enslaved Africans at a time. There were 1,000 men here, women were there, 300. They kept them two weeks minimum, maximum three months. All depends on our ships. But 1807, British came out with a law, said to stop slave trade. And that was led by one William Weberforce. 1814, that was part of the same law in Holland. And from then to 1860, slave trade in Africa never stopped. It continued for about 40 years. So 1860, the whole thing stopped. So this building was used by British as a colonial administrative center. The British were here to the time we gained our independence. They removed the British out of the castle on the 6th of March, 1987. So the castle, 1665, that the British built it to now, it is 355 years, almost 356 years. Because we are still in December, it's 355 years old. And they built a structure using bricks, like the small, small bricks. And they brought all this bricks from England. They brought the bricks to balance their ships to Africa. When they were going, these Africans as balance away. There wasn't cement when they were doing the construction. So they used grounded sea shells, lime powder, and palm oil as the binding material. And they build a castle on a rock. The foundation is huge rock. That is why for years the building is very, very strong. And when slave trade started in Africa, as a matter of fact, Europeans alone could not have captured all the millions of Africans who were taken away. But that is also not to tell you that Africans sold their own people, just like some people assume. And let me say that nobody also wanted to suffer, to suffer like this. They were captured through several means and strategies. And because Europeans needed Africans to go and work for them at all costs, they managed to create a system on the land of Africa that was very difficult for the Africans at that time to resist them. And up to today, to me, 
that system has not really changed much. The system is still working, but in a modernized way. In a modernized way. Now, one, Europeans captured some of the people physically using guns. Europeans also worked with some Africans to capture other Africans. There were other Africans called slave raiders, like our brothers of now. Europeans supplied them guns, gave them sardine, sugar, mirror, tobacco, other things. And their system of trading was better. So they forced the robbers and accept their groups. Where there was no money, these people were organizing themselves into groups like the Anna. They would go to villages, they would go and raid, they would capture people. They bring those people to Europeans, they exchange for the goods that they gave them. And then last one, that brought more than 70% of the enslaved Africans was inter-tribal wars, ethnic mm -hmm. conflicts. Mm -hmm. That is where the problem is. And we have to understand clearly that before Europeans came to Africa in 1471, which was the Portuguese, before they came, there was nothing like Ghana or Nigeria or Togo or Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. We had kingdoms, empires, African states. But I'm at an African government themselves. Sometimes they fight over a boundary just to expand their territory. Sometimes they fight over land they perceive to be rich or gold or diamond. But before Europeans came, Africans were here, go to wars with weapons like bows and arrow. When they go to war with this locally manufactured world weapons, after a long fight, one side will lose the war. The losers will be taken as domestic slaves. Those people, to a large extent, they have some amount of freedom. They could marry, raise free children. They could acquire property. Later, they were integrated into the family system. Those people were not kept in buildings like those ones. They were also not transported to Europe and America permanently. They were free people in society. And I believe that system of slavery has been with human since time immemorial. In ancient Rome, Egypt, that kind of thing. Let me give an example. In my country, Ghana, I can tell you on authority that not long ago, if you own somebody who hasn't got that money to pay, you can allow your son, your daughter, sometimes your wife, to go and work, to go and work for the person you are owing for a number of years. You will agree upon just to pay the debt. The period of which you work, you are called a slave. If you are working like that and you are a woman and you are beautiful, with a good character, and somebody from the master's family should get married to you, automatically, you free yourself from the slave to marry the family. But there's no way. I can enslave my wife. Yes, right, right, right. 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 So before they came, you had this system in place. And when they came, Europeans capitalized on our African system. So they then introduced guns to replace their bows and arrows that our sister used to fight. They gave them the sardine and the tobacco mirror. And the Africans were to pay for these things. But the system was still better, no money. And they would tell the leaders that they need those guns to protect themselves, fight the other tribes, take everything. The guns get to the chiefs. The only option at that time was to organize their people, use their weapons against the other tribes. So whenever they fight, the losers, instead of them to become domestic slaves in their homes, as they were doing before, those people were given to the Europeans in exchange for guns, in exchange for sardine, mirror, tobacco, divide and rule, divide and conquer. This was the system 500 years ago. Hmm. If you look at what is happening globally, what has really changed? Africans. Nothing. The system is still working like the body nice way. The people came from all over West Africa, some from Ghana, southern parts, some from the northern parts, some from three northern regions, some from Togo, Nigeria, Burkina Faso. We are placed in this country like Salaga in northern Ghana, Sandema, Togo, Nikoro, those are market centers where they will gather them. From there they will start to walk. They walk, came by foot. They spend more than three, four, five months walking. Through Kumasi, or Simasi, they had a stopover before they brought to the castles. And when they arrived in the castle, they were taken to Palava Hall for auction. After auctioning, they would brand them. You see their trademarks. But they put them here for about three months again, waiting for ships. So this is in a way a brief background before we start the walk, the tour itself. I will pause if you have a question to ask me. Thank you. But let me chip in this one also. Have you ever heard of Mansa Musa before? Yes. yes. Mansa Musa. Yeah. Thank you. Mansa Musa was one of the richest men ever lived on this planet. And then uh, he traded in gold. He worth so many billions of dollars. He collapsed the economy of Egypt and Saudi Arabia for several years. So Europeans 
the news of Masa Musa spread across Europe. So Europeans wanted to get to the source of Masa Musa gold, where Masa Musa was getting his gold. At that time, the Arabs were also trading. Uh, they were trading, taking captives. So Europeans came to West Africa, tried to block the Arabs and the Masa Musa and people from covering the whole of Africa and also to get access to the gold. So gold was one of the factors for Europeans coming to Africa. But that matter, Ghana has more of the castles. Out of about 66 foreign castles in Africa, uh, Ghana has more than 46 of them because of gold. So we had gold at that time, we still have, we still have gold today. The, our, soil is, is, our soil is full of gold. All right, so if no questions again, we are moving down. But the rule is this, after two steps, no steps again. But you have to be in the middle. Don't go closer to the wall. And Max must be gone. Thank you. Thank you. That's my answer. Just lock arms, uh, strength in numbers, and uh, you'll be good. Yes. Brace each other. There you go. Yes, the man himself, the crew, man. Yes. Yeah, for safety, if a few of us want to go down together, that, that helps. I'm at home. Got you? I got somebody strong to lift you down here. Oh, I'm at home. No, you're good. Yeah, no, you're good. But I forgot my light. I've been here several times. You can, uh, Kim, you can light it in the female dungeons. It's right there. Oh, yeah. It's a lighter in there? No, I'll get you. I got you. I got a lighter for everybody. You have one? I might have one. Oh, you? Okay. I should.